Welcome to the garden. Eric and I have been doing a lot of work out here the last few days and honestly the last few weeks. It takes a lot of time to plant this entire garden. And we've been frost free for like two weeks now. So we have almost all of our crops out here really. A lot of the cold crops, still have a lot more work to do. Some of the high tunnel stuff like the corn and the squash, I haven't moved out because it's not warm enough, but we've been getting a lot of stuff done. We actually just completed our onion row yesterday. It took a long time. You can see there is hundreds of onion seedlings. In fact, we have shallots and leeks in this bed too. I mean, I want to say it's close to like a thousand. It's a lot. We didn't have enough last year and I wanted to make sure that we had no shortage this year. I love starting the onions from seed. I feel like it's the most economic and we have done sets and bulbs in the past, but generally the seeds that we start, they can get really big in that same season. So I really like to do it that way. This has been our best year ever actually. I had no setbacks with them from the time I started them. They germinated really well and they're nice and thick right now at the time of planting. As you can imagine, it takes a long time time to plant this many. It's not necessarily one of my favorite tasks, but it's really worth it once we get to harvest the onions. The type of onions that we're growing are long day onions. That's because of our latitude. We're already at 18 hours of sunlight, so we definitely need to make sure that we grow those types of onions here. This area is actually bunching onions. So I've got bunching onions, and then we move over to shallots. I've got zebrun and consivor. That's a, one of my favorites. I really like that one. Further down, we have Walla Walla onions. I've got yellow sweet Spanish. That's a new one for us. I'm really excited to try that. I've got another heirloom yellow kind and Patterson. We've grown Patterson before. That stores really well. And that's important for us to have the onions that store really well because we like to have them until right now, the spring months. We're growing two red onions this year, red burgundy and red wing, and they look awesome. They're super, super thick and I'm just really excited about them. This is definitely, I'm feeling like it's gonna be a really good onion year. I like to fertilize a lot with nitrogen, even though they're already well, the soil's well composted. I just feel like we have the most success when I add nitrogen to them. So we use blood meal, alfalfa meal is probably the most common one I use. That just takes a little while to break down since it's thicker or granular. And I also like to hit them sometimes with like liquid nitrogen fertilizer. We're also growing white sweet Spanish in addition to the yellow. And I have Weathersfield, which is another red variety and yellow globe. That is also a new one for me. And at the end, I have Alicia Craig. Very, very excited for that one. That's supposed to be this big, sweet one, just like Walla Walla. They don't store very well, but Eric and I love those sweet onions. They are awesome, even just like eating fresh. I know it sounds weird, but they're delicious. I love them. And we've got the leeks at the WAND. This is a 34 foot row we have for our onions. And it seems like a lot, probably because it is. But again, I really like them and I love shallots and leeks and all that good stuff. We use a lot for cooking, canning. We want to try air drying some this year too, in, in addition to freezing some. We did that a lot last year. I'm very excited for this row and I hope it does well. I think it's going to. <laughs> We've also got a lot of our herbs planted. We did them in our little grow bags and in one of our buckets. We've got our parsley, two different kinds of sages. Uh, we got thyme, and then we did a rosemary down there. We did this last year, kind of like a little section of herbs. It's really nice when we're making dinner or something, you can just come out here, clip the herbs that you need. And we're also gonna be planting a lot more herbs, just kind of spread out in the garden. We have another big project we're gonna be working on over on our asparagus bed. So this is our asparagus bed and it is in the coldest part of the garden. The snow was the last to melt over here. It's about a two foot wide bed and it's 36 feet long. The asparagus are just not doing very well. The row is kind of just like sunken down. There's not much mass to it. We want to add a lot more dirt to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out some of these logs and we've got a big pile of logs over there. We're going to build a new bed for it and we've got a bunch of compost we're going to be adding to it. No wonder these guys aren't doing good. Yeah. I know. It's just too much competition. Doesn't that sound like a... Ice. That's ice. That is ice. Yeah, it is. It's not on the row, but it's... Oh my gosh, that was a really long one. Hey, unless they're fireweed. Well, you can probably see that this ground, this raised bed has become one with the ground and 
it's not looking very good. That's why we're doing all this work. Our asparagus in Oregon, they were on their third year. They were doing awesome. I mean, we were getting like toe size spears. It was really awesome when we left. These have just never really produced like that. And I'm definitely guessing it's because of the area and obviously our, our climate. But also the ones we had back home, they were in a very nice raised bed. And I think that had a lot to do with it. I think asparagus crowns need a lot of drainage and they probably don't like being one with the forest. So we have a lot of work to do. This is our lilac bush. We've had this for two years or three years, I guess. And it's doing really well. It was doing really well, but in the fall, we took down the fencing for snow blowing and a mom, Moose, and her baby came in and the baby just totally chowed down on it. It was really high. It was like up to here from all that new growth, but you can tell now it's been mowed back. So it's alive, but it's gonna probably take at least a year to two to recover, sadly. Well, we've got all the logs up. We used some real thin logs for some reason. That's probably why this bed wasn't built up very much, but we're gonna try to locate where all the asparagus are. You can kind of tell where they grew last year. And I don't know exactly how many we have in here, but we're gonna try to dig them up and hopefully the ground's not too frozen and we can get them all up. Well, it didn't take very long to find the roots. This is one crown and I think they grow kind of like an octopus. Imagine, you know, with their little roots all spread out and that's what this one looks like it's doing here. Um, it looks alive because it's white and nice and bright and healthy. I don't know if all of them were alive. I think we started with like 25 and last year there was a few that did not come back. This variety we're growing is Jersey Supreme. So it is appropriate for zone three, but you do need to mulch them and you gotta take care of them. And they definitely are neglected. This is not ideal to do this to your asparagus. You wanna usually plant them and they'll last for a very long time, decades, but we've gotta make sure that they're well taken care of. So I'm just gonna try to dig this one up. Well, we finally got one out and I think it came out really well. There's a few broken roots, but it should be fine. We have had to do this before actually in Oregon. I remember we, we moved some to different area and they, they worked out good like that. There's the new spears starting at the base of the crown. And then these are all their roots. A few of them were going down, but really not that many. And this is a lot bigger than when we planted it. We planted two year old crowns. So it has gotten a lot bigger, but got a lot of work to do. And I'm thinking they're gonna do a lot better with the new bed. This one looks okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's a lot, it's partially alive. I can tell by the light colored roots, but then there's a lot of parts that don't look very healthy. Doesn't surprise me. Didn't have good drainage. And there's a lot of competition over here with the weeds and the, the forest really is right next to it. So I don't know. I did go ahead and purchase 10 new crowns, millennium. So we're also going to be planting those kind of as our backup for the ones that didn't make it. This is a beast. This is a really, really big one. Um, and even its stock is huge. I was convinced that was not the asparagus stock. It's got a huge spear developing too. And these four over here are, they were always bigger. And it's just the way the sun is in this area of the garden, it gets warmer over here. Whereas the other corner is the exact opposite. Those ones were really thin. And some of those in fact did not even survive. So these are some wimpy ones compared to this guy. In fact, I'm pretty sure this was a little bigger when I started him. Maybe the same size. This one didn't live. Eric pulled this up and you can tell it's just, there's no life left in that. That's rotten. This one's alive. A lot of them are alive. I think I broke one and Eric's found maybe one or two rotten ones. So this one is definitely a good one to replant. It's actually really nice dirt. You know, yeah, mine. it started to get frozen on those last two I did. Man, you really need leverage, huh? Be rough with him, why don't you? Oh, look at his spears. I know. He's beautiful. He's got a few. Right up against it? Yep. Like that far? Yep. Sorry. I should have told you he was going to drop it. Well, we've got the back 
log in. That's going to be the back of the row. We pushed it back towards the fence a little more, make the row a little bit bigger. And we're going to really build this row up. It sunk down a lot over the two years that we first put this bed in. So we're going to do a lot of compost. we got a whole trailer full over there. We're going to go get another load of topsoil. So we're going to be putting that on there. First, what we're going to do is we're going to put the ends on and then we got to finish the whole front section of this row. But it's looking good. Arrow went through and kind of raked everything up, cleaned it up. We got most of the weeds out, feeding to those to the chickens. I have a feeling the asparagus are going to do a lot better over here. Ooh, that's a nice one right there. I like that. Okay, things are looking really good. This bed looks awesome. It looks just like our raised rows, which really help with drainage and it helps heat the soil up. So I'm thinking the asparagus are gonna do really well over here now. We've got a really nice layer of the compost, the topsoil. We're gonna come through, put our asparagus pretty close to the top because we know this is gonna sink down a little bit. Generally, when you're doing asparagus crowns, you actually wanna plant them a little deeper and then add soil as they grow. We're doing it kind of opposite because we know that this is going to sink and our ground here shifts a little bit. So we want to make sure that we don't have a repeat of what happened in the past. So we're going to get our asparagus placed now in the final home. Because they're going to, my guess is they're going to settle. Yeah. And here's the thing, even if they don't settle that much, we want them, I want them trenched up. Or not trenched up, but you know what I mean. I want them to get Built up, yeah. Yeah. I just think they really need to be in a raised bed. Ooh, look at yours, doing the splits. <laughs> well, we ended up with 26 asparagus. Seven are the new kind that I ordered, Millennium. And these other kinds are Jersey Supreme. And these are one-year-old crowns. So these are a lot smaller. In fact, I think that we ordered one-year-old crowns too to begin with, and you can tell they've gotten a lot bigger. There was a few that just didn't look good, so we're not gonna reuse those. There's a few different ways to plant asparagus. Um, most of it is just digging a trench and you want to put the plants down. You can kind of spread their roots out for them. That's how they grow, like again, like an octopus. And you can help them with that. We just kind of did little slits, that works too. And we're gonna be covering them back up with probably like an inch, maybe two inches of soil letting them kind of settle down as the year goes on and then we're gonna mulch them a lot in the fall. And I also wanna put a bunch of straw on because I wanna make sure that we don't get weeds in this bed. We're keeping these crowns about 15 inches apart from each other. You can do them, you can do them further, but that we found they can be pretty close and that works fine. So you wanna take them and build like a little circular hole. If you put a little mound in the middle, you can actually kind of spread the roots around it it's a little bit tricky. That's why I kind of like to just do the splits. So that's about what we're looking for. Real simple. Just a little sprinkle. I don't really ever fruit one. I think that just the compost is more than enough. Okay. Sometimes when you go to do things a second time, you do such a better job, huh? You know? Strawberry bed, this, it's all looking good. No, I was just thinking this is really cool that all that manure is underneath it. And they're right on top, so they'll, their roots will kind of... It's good. Go into it. 
right the asparagus bed is done i think it was well worth the effort it's still probably gonna be a few years till we can harvest from them we put some fish bone meal i wanted to fertilize with that i usually don't really fertilize asparagus at all they really just like a lot of compost but i just figured i'd do that i was doing some reading and this is you know they're getting replanted this is the opportune time all we have to do is water them and get this drawn Today we're back out in the garden. We have a big day planned. We are doing our potatoes. We're planting all of them and I think we have 35, which is a lot. We usually like to grow a lot of potatoes. We like extras and we use them really for a lot of things. They store great, so it's perfect for us. They also grow wonderfully in Alaska. Our potatoes are sprouted and the row that we're planting them is totally ready. We got it ready last fall actually. We have a bog in the backyard and I collected some of the sphagnum moss on top and added it to this bed. And I did that intentionally because I wanted to try to lower the acidity just a little bit. Not quite sure where our soil stands. I do think it is closer towards neutral since we tend to grow a lot of things and they grow well. Potatoes like slightly acidic soil and I do get scab sometimes and that can happen for a few different reasons, but I want to try to mitigate that. So I tried to lower the pH just a little bit. Another thing that's important to do with potatoes is constantly rotate where you're planting them it's best to just not plant them in the same area over and over again. Last night we finished up doing even more planting. We got our celery in right in front of me and some celeriac, which is new to us. It's this big bulb that grows at the base of the plant. It tastes just like celery. It's a root crop, I believe, even though it's technically above ground. But um, I'm really excited for that one. We've got about 50 celeries and we're growing tango in Utah. I love tango. Eric likes Utah, but Tango just grows a little faster. So I really like both of them, honestly. The potatoes should be super easy to plant this season because they're not that far sprouted except for just a handful of them. Um, so we're gonna get started. We're starting with Magic Molly, which is a fingerling potato. And I'm just going just a few inches down, honestly, maybe like three. I'm gonna put them down in there. Okay, maybe I'm going about five. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just cover it right up. I really like fingerlings because they are small potatoes, but they are very prolific. They always give you a lot more, I feel like, than compared to the other kinds of potatoes. So if you're in like a smaller space, I think that's the potato you should grow. This is that moss I was talking about. This is Magic Myrna, another fingerling. And we're doing them about a foot apart. I kind of do them at staggered at an angle and we just want to make sure that the sprouts are kind of pointing upwards you can lay them sideways too these are both new varieties for us this variety i believe has some splotches like a pink and white skin and then the magic molly is purple skin and purple flesh we've grown one like that before and it did really well <laughs> they also store really well too Now this guy is not that far along as far as sprouting goes and that's totally okay because he will continue to sprout underground and eventually we'll see these little guys come up, you know, break the surface. Um, you can definitely plant them when they're further along and like this one, it just gets a little tricky because you want these to be under the soil. We're growing a lot of gold varieties this year. We've got red gold, Susitna gold, German butterball, and I have a few other random ones too. Some of them are new to us. We really like the gold potatoes. They have yellow flesh and they also have yellow skin, generally or gold, um, but they are, they're really tasty. They're really, really good. They don't dye the pan or the food that you're, you're cooking. They don't dye it that purple color if you ever cook with purple ones. Um, I know they're, they're one of Eric's favorites, potatoes, but I actually really like them too. They're really crispy. So you may be noticing that we do not cut our potatoes and we've been growing potatoes this way for years. And it's always worked out really well for us. So that is just my, reasoning for being hesitant to cut them. Um, so I know a lot of folks do that. Uh, it wasn't extremely costly at all by any means to buy this amount of potatoes. So we're just going with what we always do. Eric's gonna jump in here and help me get the rest of them planted. 
Eric's pointing huckleberry gold. That's a new one for us. Purple skin and gold flesh. That's gonna be a good one. And potatoes are awesome, in my opinion, for growing because we don't, I mean, technically we start them inside the cabin, we let them sprout, but there's just no maintenance to them. We don't need to run grow lights for them or anything like that. And you just, they're super easy to plant. You stick them in the ground, you get a lot of potatoes and they're extremely fun to harvest. Totally. I'm gonna dig this one deep. Lots of new varieties for us this year. We got our potatoes from a local supplier. Very nice gentleman, very excited to get them from him. And like I said, a lot of new ones. I'm really excited about that. We like to grow a lot of different colors. I'm a big fan of just mixing and mingling because I like the rainbow effect that you get. As far as flavor, they do taste difference and cooking, there is a lot of differences as well as even storage abilities. Definitely gold is gonna win as far as flavor goes, but I always like the pink or the red ones and the purple ones for the color. This is Delta Red, new one for us as well. And it's got red flesh, as you may have guessed, and red skin. Perfect sprouting. This is like my favorite length to plant these ones. We're also giving russets a try again. We've grown them in Oregon before. They did pretty well, but I'm really excited to get them again here. We're gonna be planting Shepherdy and Sierra Russet. So it's kind of tough to get there. See, technically they don't even grow to the bottom, so yeah, it works. I should have a shovel out here, let's see. Look at that, babe, it's still green. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's not even inside, is she? Come on, I'm gonna add some soil to this tall ones. We're moving on to our next project, which is getting our carrots sown. We're also going to be doing parsnips. We've got some daikon radish and turnips to plant as well. I wanted to show this root. This is a root from last season. I don't know what it was, maybe kale or something. And I usually do not dig these up. They break down quite well in the ground, but every once in a while I will find like a stump, like this little part here and I'll, I'll dig it up. And this is just what the soil looks like down there. So lots of things breaking down. There's mycelium on leaves, and then there's a few little worms here too, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna be pulling this out and I'll be putting it in our compost outside of the garden. Carrots, another one of my favorite veggies. Delicious, extremely easy to grow. Here, you just put the seed right in the ground. We're not gonna do as many as we did last year because we don't have the root cellar anymore, so it's a lot harder for us to store these. So most of them are gonna be for fresh eating, probably have a little bit for canning. Our parsnips are going in first, and then we're going to be doing carrots. So we moved on to Eric's favorite seeds, which are just the orange ones. I like purple carrots and I like rainbow carrots. In fact, purple carrots are really hard for us to grow, but I found success with the orange cord and purple flesh, I guess you'd say. Those ones work really well for us. Um, so we're growing Chatenay, Royal Chatenay, Scarlet Nantes. A lot of these are Nantes type, Nantes fancy, and another Nantes type. These grow really well here and they are delicious.
Well, it's definitely spring in Alaska. It rained yesterday and it is also drizzling a little bit right now, but that didn't stop us from planting a whole bunch of stuff. We sowed our carrots, parsnips, we did rutabaga and turnips yesterday and the peas are in the ground. I still have a few more to plant. We still have things like Swiss chard to bring out. I've got dill to bring out. I'm waiting until it gets a little bit warmer. Still have to sow beets. I also like to wait until the soil's a little bit warmer for that. And we're gonna be headed to our high tunnel today because we're gonna be planting our basil. We're getting the chainsaw mill out. I think it's been about a year since we've actually used that thing. And I saved the two by fours that you use for the railing system for this thing, but I ended up using them for a project. So we had to go buy some new two by fours and it wasn't pretty here in town, 10 foot long two by fours. These are pine, it's $27 for two of them. So I'm definitely not gonna be using these ones for any other projects. We're gonna get the chainsaw mill together. We've got a nice log here. This is a beetle kill pine and we're going to be making a little raised bed for Ariel's basil. We'll see how it turns out.
be pretty sturdy, man. They look mine standing on the sun. Yeah, they're sturdy. Hey, we can start a business. This is perfect. We start a business selling these, huh? You don't, you don't need to change this, right? No. It's perfect. It's short and stumpy. Looks like I needed it. I was going to put in more gravel once we, if we get more in there. Just topsoil. One maybe. more or two more topsoil for it? Probably two more. These plants actually have roots this big. Yeah, Do you think more. we even need? I don't think we need more. basil planter is all done. I'm pretty excited for how it turned out. It's, it's really nice. I think Eric did a nice job and obviously we have a bunch of basil in there. I also planted pineapple sage, lemon verbena. Those are both like zone 10 plants so they do not overwinter here but they are awesome. They put on a lot of growth in their first year. That's why we like to grow them. Lemon verbena is one of my favorite scents in the world. It's a really great plant if you haven't had a chance to grow it. And then we also plugged in some Cuban oregano. Same thing. It's a much warmer tropical plant, but we do get to harvest quite a bit of it. And we've also planted a lot of other stuff in the high tunnels since the last video. First up, we have 11 tomateos, and we did that because we never have enough green salsa. We are always running out of that first thing. Um, so we wanted to just make sure that we have enough this year. And a new thing for me we're trying is ground cherries. Super excited about those. I've read that they're supposed to have like a pineapple-y, grapey, tomato-y flavor, kind of strange, but they're good for jams, fresh eating, and salsa even. So very, very excited about these ones. We're trying eggplants again. I love eggplants, but this is Alaska and they don't grow that well here. So you can probably see I have some plastic over the roots. We're gonna try that this year. Ideally, they would be in a warmer environment, air temperature, but I'm gonna try to just heat up their roots and see if that helps them grow a little better. Usually they get attacked by aphids. This is our cucumber section and they're off to a really good start last year. These and the green beans, we had really unbroken down organic matter in here and it was really dry. So they just didn't do that well. They don't have super deep roots, but this year they're off to a really good start. And we planted a lot because we only ate like a handful last year. So we're really craving cucumbers again. Still got to put our green beans in the ground and a few other random herbs. That's pretty much it for in here. We appreciate you watching this video and we will catch you on the next one.